I am actually the most professional vlogger you will witness. Oh my god. Tired of messing around with the F boys. It was like a job, get me employed. But now I'm moving on to the next point. Try to date a prince instead of a simp. And let the chaotic sewing commence. Or oh, my mid-semester break, but not so much of a break. If you're new here, hello, this is CC Amethyst, and this is officially the last video about this assignment, which is creating a group collection of garments based on a color story. And you are officially witnessing me creating my final garment. In case you've missed any parts, these are all the videos of me throughout the assignment, documenting from start to finish, and this video being the finish. I am so done with this assignment, but the results are really good. I can't wait to show you but at the moment you are seeing me sew my shorts in that beautiful final taro fabric look at the darts <laughs> unfortunately we ran into some fabric sourcing problems the floral fabric that i showed you in previous videos was out of stock so this fabric that i'm holding right now was actually painted by one of my group members so this fabric ended up replacing that floral fabric and i'm using it for my sleeves for that pop of color and flowiness and the goal of my studio session that day was to cut as much of the fabric out as possible and overlock the delicate fabric because organza frays easily and I don't want to lose the shape so that next time I can just start sewing straight away. Look, it's the shoe shoe scrunchies. I went out today in these little pig dolls. This is a weird angle because this is the only place I can put my phone and film but not uni related. I thought I'd just share this for fun, but <laughs> look at this flower arrangement. I, I don't even know what flower this is called. Wait, if anyone knows what these flowers are, can you comment it? I forgot what these, what flowers these are. I bought these flowers myself um, with my friend, and I also bought these cute roses myself today. And it's so pretty. I just wanted to share how pretty this arrangement is. And like, buying fresh flowers for myself, for some reason, gives me so much serotonin. Like, it makes me so happy. Like, taking the flowers out, out of their like, big bouquet thingy, and then cutting them to length to put in this pretty glass bottle, and then arranging it them this way. Like, ah, this is so cute. I'm gonna take cute pictures. Bro, from now on, I'm gonna buy fresh flowers for myself weekly. Oh, you know what this reminds me of? You know, like, lovers buying their like significant other flowers and then the person who receives the flowers like lovingly like oh displays them in the vase and like all lovingly like oh my lover got me these flowers but then like for these flowers i'm like <laughs> i love myself this is my form of taking care of myself and loving myself because like my ex never bought me flowers for fun or just because until he had to but anyways, we're not here with negative energy, but yeah, that's all I wanted to say. <laughs> oh wait, but besides like these pretty flowers that I got myself, okay, I did get Lego flowers from someone. I don't know why I'm talking like this. <laughs> but look. Someone who had a crush on me made this Lego rose for me. Thanks. Mwah. <laughs> oh, and in case I didn't show, there's this purple rose, not rose, what flower is that again? I forgot what flower it is. And I also got this flower today, this Lego flower that I made. Yo, Lego flowers and just fresh flowers, they just make me so happy recently for some reason. It's just, they're just flowers. I know, they're not just flowers, they're serotonin boosters and make me happy. I don't know, the flowers and roses, it's like a symbol of love for me, like any type, not just roses that I like love and care myself enough you know that I deserve them and I don't need no like man or wait for someone to get them for me getting them for myself is such a power move and such a loving move as well for myself like the amount of self courage and love it takes <laughs> I 
was overlocking the remaining smaller pieces in the organza which is for the shoulder pieces on my sleeve top then I proceeded to finish sewing the purple shorts because I was getting my model aka my friend to come and try on the shorts because she's gonna model for my presentation and our standard model size for patterning was a size 10 and thankfully I did not need to do any major changes like it just fit her just right snugly although I did make her try on the shorts before sewing on the zip just in case it didn't fit and I needed to do changes which is why I made her try on the shorts before and after sewing the closure and this was actually my last full studio day in class working on my final garment before the weekend and since I don't really have table space or the tools to cut out all my fabrics I aim to finish cutting my top pieces and all the long straps three straps in total all roughly around one meter and it was also the same strap pattern that one of my group members used and having similar features in the collection was very important for consistency Okay, I'm not gonna film me sewing because I feel like it's gonna take too much time but I bought the fabrics home um, this is the sleeve and this is the purple top I'm gonna try and sew it right now and it's gonna be done in a second like this, bam! I come back with full face of makeup and the top done. I could not help myself, okay? I need to try this on. This is a size 10 and I'm like usually smaller, but I wanted to try and see how it looks. Oh! And the makeup that ColourPop recently sent me in PR perfectly matches the color scheme of this top. So I'm going to do a little photo shoot for Instagram. <laughs> Bro, the pictures that I just took, I look so hot. The top looks like high fashion, like... Okay, but the last thing I need to do, well, kind of last, I still have some things. It's basically the top. Now I have this piece, thingy-majiggy, but I'm supposed to marry these two pieces, the lining and the outer piece. And I need to sew the straps and also loops. And I'm done. Not really, I have my portfolio to write on. <laughs> Another lazy afternoon The clouds covered in grey Third coffee of the day Almost fell asleep on soon I yawn at the display Third meeting of the day But I can hear raindrops that dancing on the Presentation is tomorrow of the final collection and presentation and talking about our process and storyboard. I just came home um, probably an hour or so ago and I've been sipping on my matcha while writing out the script, well kind of the script, like the storyboard and idea behind our collection that I'm gonna say for our presentation tomorrow. So it'll mostly be me and my friend May that will be talking about the whole story and I think I just wrote the best thing ever. My English teacher is screaming with the amount of deep stuff and symbolism <laughs> I've included. Oh god, guys, I'm literally so proud of this. I feel like this is the best bullshitting I've ever done. <laughs> okay, let me read it out for you guys, okay? So, with our collection, it is a high fashion streetwear where we wear our clothes is a night out with the girls. Now our initial idea was based on the concept of escapism and exploring the different forms of escapism. As a group, we had contrasting views on our way of escaping the troubles of reality, like hyper-focusing on the positives of the world without thinking of the negatives, as ignorance is bliss. The opposite of this will be engaging in numbing activities like substances and technology. In general, our group wanted to captivate the feeling of spacing out, running away into the clear, away from the crowdedness of stress and burdens of reality. 
This developed our three main keywords, lucid dream, fluid and anchor with a color palette of colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel, purple and yellow, blue and orange, along with turquoise as the middleman, aka bridging between daydreaming in bliss and the harsh reality. With the opposite colors on the color wheel, it represents the contrast of the harsh reality and dreaming away your problems. The muted and dark tones act as the anchor that ties us back to reality, hence the ties and form fitted silhouettes and parts of our garments. Lucid dream and fluid juxtaposes anchor as it represents the concept of running away and daydreaming into the clouds, light-hearted and free of problems. This leads us to include light fabrics with the whimsical gathered silhouettes within our collection. The reason with our muted tones with the contrast of form-fitted and flo flowy aspects of our silhouettes is because with the story of our collection, we want to portray that although we may attempt to escape the harsh reality through partying a night out and indulging in hyper serotonin activities we cannot actually ever run away and escape the negatives of reality even if it's temporarily so we need to always address and ultimately face reality head on with the help of temporary escapism of course for the sake of our mental health obviously i'm not gonna talk that fast with so much energy in our presentation tomorrow, but ah, your girl just wrote that. Uh, I just need to hand sew the little class on the cuffs, and I'll be done. And ah, excited, but also nervous for tomorrow, but also excited. This is now after our presentation and we were taking our final group photos outside of the classroom and surprisingly we only got positive feedback and our main tutor really liked our color palette and fabric choices and how everything tied up with our color story so I guess my speech presentation went well like we heard another group get some criticism or interesting questions on why they did certain things but for us it was surprisingly like I thought it was dreaming it was just compliments after compliment along with a typical normal questionnaire about our fabrics and concept but I guess this is it the final collection <laughs> I spontaneously ended up modeling for another group's presentation I was surprised they asked me to do it but I guess they had another model that was quite petite but the thing was my sizing was maybe one or two size smaller than what her actual garment was so there was a lot of pinning and clipping so that the garment looked nice on me but regardless it was kind of fun to model for another group <laughs> Oh, that was the funniest thing ever. Wow. I need to stop making those sound effects. Oh my god. Yeah, I, I realize when I'm editing my YouTube videos, I'm like, what the hell are you saying? My fave Peri Peri chips and the Mediterranean pizza with this little eggy. Traditional kind of. No, we deserve a treat. <laughs>
just a laying and replaying that look upon your face. Your laugh is contagious. This is like my childhood. That one has a butterfly as well and a moon. Okay. A little heart seeker. That is me, a typical Libra. I mean, wow. A tassel here and an ass tassel. Actually, this is really cute. Wait, let's see. Ta da, this is what my friend got. Wait, it's the opposite. Colors. Before submitting my final portfolio, I went back to the studio to take pictures of all the patterns I made and developed for my garment. And as you can see, that's a lot. These are all for my top pattern pieces. With so many different changes to the length and light curves until finally coming to this pattern as the final one. Then moving down to shorts, I made at least four different short patterns, changing around the darts and length until I got my desired look and fit. These are my shoulder pattern pieces and the development and changes I made. And keep in mind, this doesn't even include the block manipulation because as you can see for my sleeve pattern developments, there's that little split um, paper, which is the in-between manipulation between my first and second development. But as you can see, that is how big my pattern pieces are compared to my hand and how many there were in total. I needed to take pictures of all my patterns and have them in my portfolio to explain the making of my garment. One, I guess, is evidence that like we did it, as well as showing technical skill and how we overcome certain problems. And all there was left for the assignment was to write everything I needed because the first thing I did was photo dump into the slideshow then I would just need to fill in the blanks oh and a really random proud moment here do you see that eyeliner I did that on the bus I was running a little late but regardless your girl still needs to look fabulous going to uni so I did my makeup on the bus and I'm just so proud so here it is guess what I am not going to class because I haven't done a single thing since last time so I'm gonna to go to the library to catch up on all the work and look I'm going to the library with pearls in my braids I thought it looked so cool and I thought I'd show you TikTok when the haul comes up because this is a collab but guys look at how big that bow is wait I am actually the most professional vlogger you will witness oh my god I am trying to balance you on my table but <laughs> this big bow it's like a baby doll dress style in one of my vlogs this one, I was mentioning how like this clothing brand that I really like is like collabing with me. It's this one. It's this one. <laughs> I am submitting it now. Submit. Wait, why is it? Why is it not submitting? Oh, 
I agree. Okay, now I submit. Oh, okay, okay, yay! Thank you so much for watching this assignment's entire journey. Comment down below and let me know what was your favorite part about this whole process. And guess what? The next video is going to be a Louis Vuitton inspired gown. <laughs>